Hello, good afternoon, dear students. My name is Dr. Shuaib Mohammed Bhatt. I am working as assistant professor in the Department of English at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, in this video lecture, we shall be talking about COPO mapping with special reference to module third uh, of professional communication, which is vocabulary and grammar. So, COPO, how COs, course outcomes, how they are mapping or how they are aligning to program outcomes. Uh, program outcomes uh, for professional communication and the module is third which is entitled as vocabulary and grammar. So before I go on with the mapping I would like to share with you one thing that is according to OB outcome based education. So every course is having its course outcome and every program is having its program outcome. It's not like there are only course outcomes but there are program outcomes as well. So program outcome or this course outcome, it should be according to the program outcome. It should be aligning with the program outcome. It should not be something which is very contrary to the program outcome. Because when a student is going or when a student is pursuing a program, each and every course must be having certain objectives which are aligning to the course, which are aligning to the program objectives or program outcomes. So then only we can say, yes, Every course of the program is, is according to the needs or according to the requirements of that program and according to the requirements of the students of that particular program. So that's what we are doing here in this video. I'll show you how the course outcome of this professional communication of module third vocabulary and grammar, how they are clearly mapped to the program outcomes. Let's see. First, I would like to introduce you outcome-based education. Outcome-based education, it's a student-centric teaching and learning methodology. So it is student-centric. It's not teacher-centric. Earlier, like we have the traditional methodology, traditional, uh, traditional mode of education. So that is, to some extent, that is teacher-based, teacher-centric. Because we are paying more attention to the, to the, to the teacher. A lot of trainings are being given to teachers. There's less attention given to the students because we do not see any big change in the curriculum. We do not see any big change in the syllabus. We do not see any big change in the, in the mode of delivery. We do not see any good or any, any effective change uh, for the ass assessments. We have normally examinations at the end of every semester, at the end of every year. So there is nothing which is being changed. When there is no change, we can say, it's like stagnant, it is static. So there may not be such type of improvement, such type of progress, because the whole world is changing, because the whole world has adopted new ways to live, new ways to grow, new ways to move. So we see the, out, the orthodox model of education that is stagnant, no changes there. That's going on with that previous, with that, with that old age methodology. So that's why we are having this outcome-based education. It was Williams Paddy, Williams Paddy, who gave this concept, who coined this term in 1988, OB, outcome-based education. It is that model of education which talks about some outcomes, which talks about course outcomes, program outcomes, and it talks about the measurement of student performance, and it talks about different assessments. So that's why I'm telling you, it's a student-centric teaching and learning methodology. It's that methodology which is student-centric, which has made student as the epicenter of education, which has, which has laid its focus on student rather than teacher. And in this methodology, the course delivery assessments are planned. Course delivery is already planned there. So there is no need to include something of your own. No. The... And the, 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 the syllabus setters, or I can say the designers of this, uh, of this uh, module of education, they have designed the delivery of course and assessment as well. What sort of assessments you are going to, you are going to have for a particular course. So they are planned to achieve stated objectives and outcomes. In order to achieve certain objectives and outcomes, there are clear cut. There are there are clearly uh, given the given the roadmap for the delivery of lectures and assessments are also given. So there are different assessments. It's not like as I told you the orthodox system of education 
where we have those examinations at the end of semester or at the end of year. It's not like that only. Examinations are also there, but along with the examinations, certain other elements have been introduced. Like we have tech talks, like we have some assessment assignments, we have quizzes, we have different other things by which we check students, by which we check whether they are they are achieving their ob stated objectives and outcomes or not. Then it focuses on measuring student uh, student performance. Its focus, another characteristic feature or another important point about outcome-based education is uh, that is it it's uh, it focuses on measuring on uh, measuring student performance. Its main focus is to measure student performance. That is outcomes at different levels. It measures student outcomes. For example, you are doing bachelor's here, B.Tech. You are doing so. It's a four years degree. It takes four years to finish the degree. So your your levels, your outcome levels will be checked after every semester. So you you are having eight semesters. After every semester, your uh, performance level or your outcomes are being checked. Then, key features. What are the main features? What are the key features for implementation of outcome-based education? Let's talk about these key features. Number one is development of curriculum framework. It wholly and solely relies on the first thing which it relies on that is curriculum. So curriculum framework, it should be made, it should be drawn, it should include those things which will highlight or which will help you to outline specific and measurable outcomes. So curriculum should include specific and measurable outcomes. It should not include those outcomes which cannot be attained by the students, which cannot be achieved by the students. You are talking about one thing in the syllabus and your objectives are something else. No, that's faulty way of uh, creating objectives. That's a faulty curriculum. Your curriculum should be, should be set up in such a way so that it talks about specified and measurable outcomes. The, the, the outcomes which are specific in nature. It's not a long list of outcomes. No, they are particular. They are specific. And at the end, there are measurable outcomes. These are not uh, some abstract outcomes. These are not some mysterious outcomes. This is not something which is totally obscure. Rather, these are real life outcomes which can be achieved by the student at the end of different levels. Then the next thing is instructional methodology. So the methodology for instruction, methodology for teaching, methodology for delivering lecture, it should ensure delivery for specified outcomes. So you should plan your delivery in such a way so that a student can be able to achieve those particular outcomes. So methodology for instructions, your instruction, your teaching method, it should be for achieving specified outcomes. Because when you are there as a teacher in the class following this outcome-based education module, model, so you need to plan your delivery in such a way so that a student at the end of one academic level should be able to achieve an outcome. Because when your student is not able to achieve an outcome, then what is the use of having uh, this OB, outcome-based education model? What is the need? I feel there is a no need because it believes it relies on these objectives and outcomes. Then standards-based assessments. There should be standard-based assessments. Assessments should be standard-based. There should be a standard. Your assessments should not be like uh, you have you have again invited those traditional ways of assessment. You are taking those bookish exams at the end of every year or every semester. No, there should be standard assessments, and these standard assessments they determine whether students have achieved the stated standard or not. It is because of this assessment. This standard assessment, so you will come to know whether your students have achieved the stated objectives or not. So there are three things which I talked about. One is curriculum. It should be comprehensive in nature. It should talk about specific and measurable outcomes. Then second is the methodology related to your instructions. Your methodology of instruction should talk about, should ensure you the delivery of the lecture for specified outcomes. Then is the standard-based assessments. 
your assessment should determine whether students have achieved the stated objectives or not. So these are the three key features which are essential in order to implement outcome-based education. Now let's move to the syllabus of module 3. The syllabus of module 3 is the, the title is vocabulary and grammar. This, the uh, syllabus is it's divided in certain different parts are there like concept of word formation, idioms and phrases, one word substitutes are there. Sentence structure is there. We have simple compound and complex sentences. Usage, usage of punctuation marks are there. Adva Advanced level prepositions are there. Tenses, subject to verb agreement, degree of comparison, and we have narration, active passive voice, and question tags. These are the different topics which come under vocabulary and grammar. And I'll tell you how 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 these uh, different topics they help you to attain the program outcomes because we will be talking about program outcomes as well. So these are the different topics which are there in module third. That's vocabulary and grammar. So before going with the CEO's uh, course objectives and program outcomes, it's better if we first check if you go with go with the course objectives what are course objectives one is standard pronunciation appropriate word stress necessary intonation patterns effective communication towards achieving academic and professional targets the course objective the course for professional communication its objective is one a student should be able to know standard pronunciation should be able for word stress know what is word stress and implement word stress necessary intonation patterns and effective communication towards achieving academic and professional targets. In order to achieve academic target or in order to achieve professional target, one should know all these things and one should know effective communication. This is the first objective. Second objective is one should know the grammatical structures and also using the nuances of punctuation tools for practical purposes. So one should know appropriate grammatical structures and one should be familiar with the punctuation tools for practical purposes because we need punctuation both in writing and speaking and we need grammar both in writing and speaking. Then critical aspect of speaking and reading for interpreting in depth meaning between sentences. One should, one should know the critical speaking and reading. So that one can easily interpret what is in between the sentences. It's not like we are we are the surface readers or we are surface speakers. Rather, we should know what the figurative language is. We should know what is beyond the lines. We should know, we should know all the ironical statements. So that type of communication we should have. Then the next objective, the last objective of the course is a conceptual awareness on writing in terms of unity. There should be a conceptual awareness on writing. On writing in terms of unity, content, coherence or linguistic accuracy. One should know how to unite a written, a, a written document. Or how to unite a document when, when one is writing any document. One should know the content. One should know the coherence or one should know the linguistic accuracy. So it's not only like your word formation will be checked. Different other parameters are there. Then let's see the, what is the relationship between CO and PO. CO should align to PO. Because this is the CO. These are the different course outcomes which awares a person at the end of the put at the end of a particular program whether he has achieved the program outcomes or not. Because COs they are linked with the pr program outcomes. And there is the formula to check the CEOs with the program outcomes. Students should be able to behave plus resulting evidence. So one should be able to behave One should be able to mold the behavior. So then we have, what is the course outcome? Course outcome is, uh, after successful completion of the course, student will be able to what? Interpret the grammatical structures effectively in speaking, writing at functional usage. So after the end of the course, a student should be able to know the grammatical structures effectively in speaking and writing at functional usage. Functional usage means at any step of, at any um, junction of life. 
in your academic career, in your professional career. So one should be able to effectively speak and write. This is the course outcome. Then this is COPO mapping. And here are program outcomes. Program outcomes are very clearly, uh, clearly just uh, written here. Like see, the program outcome is communicate effectively on complex engineering activities. A student should communicate effectively on complex engineering activities with the engineering community and society at large. And a student should be able to comprehend and write effective reports and design documentation and make effective presentation. Now, when you go with the syllabus, which I have shown you in the previous slides regarding vocabulary and grammar, every vertex of that syllabus is supporting this program outcome. You can communicate effectively when you have good vocabulary, when you know the word formation. So you can speak in engineering circles when you have vocabulary. When you know the stress, intonation, you can write things properly when you are rich in vocabulary. So these are the program outcomes and RCOs, course outcomes, they are highly aligning with the program outcomes. But then, after program outcomes, there is the justification of mapping. So these are uh, justification of COs with POs. Interpret the grammatical knowledge and punctuation marks systematically towards providing the clarity. And so at the end of this, uh, at the end of the course, your CO is here mapped with the PO. A student will be able to interpret the grammatical knowledge and punctuation mark systematically towards providing clarity in speaking and writing. A student will be able to know the grammar and punctuation marks so that he or she can use them in his or her speech with clarity uh, in speaking and writing. So this is what your program outcomes are. Program outcomes like they want pro in your program, it wants you to be a person who can speak with fluency, with confidence. You, it wants you to write more clearly and this can be attained, this can be achieved by your course outcomes. Your course outcomes are, are providing you these things. Then it is CO, PO and PSO mapping. These are the key competencies. Then there's a percentage of key competencies and course matrix, course articulation matrix. Then there are benefits of OB. One thing about OB is its clarity. So the focus on outcome creates a clear expectation. When you focus on outcome, what are the different outcomes? When you focus on that, being a student, you focus on the outcomes. So obviously you are having the clear expectation of what needs to be accompanied by the end of the course. So there is a kind of clarity, what you will achieve at the end of the course and what you need in order to achieve those things at the, till the end of your course. Then it is flexible. Flexible is, like uh, uh, with a clear sense of what needs to be accomplished, an instructor, an instructor can mend it. It can be modified according to the needs of the students. And it contains only those things which are available, which are essential for the students. Then comparison, it can be compared across any, any level like individual class, batch, program, institution, no foundation. Then involvement, student involvement is more required for OB. OBE heavily relies on student involvement. So there are certain portions which are being given to students. It's not like that orthodox classwork or homework we are giving. No, a particular portion of student is being handed to students so that they can prepare that thing by their own. So it is in order to make them more responsible for their learning. And a student should learn more through individual learning. Individual learning is essential for the students because students get benefited by, by individual learning. Well, this is all about this, about the second, uh, about this course COPO mapping. I hope I have just, I have done justification with it and you all must have, uh, must be aware now how our course outcomes are mapped with the program outcomes. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.